affordable housing. And so the only way we're going to be able to do that is making sure that, one, we continue advocating the way that that has been done over the last eight years since I've been there, because I know that it has been advocated for for years prior, prior to that. Uh, so the only way we're going to be able to do that is continue to advocate for it. Because truth be told, yeah, I'm not, we're not going to be able to, to say we're just going to go and force the hand of the appropriation chair and um, come the last hours of, of of committee week and say, uh, let, don't, don't sweep Sadowski fund because when we walk out that room, they're going to do uh, whatever, they, whatever they want to do. I think the Realtors Association, uh, legislators like myself and other organizations who have uh, who advocated so hard this year when it came to the affordable housing, um, uh, uh, the affordable housing trust fund, I think that we should continue laying our state on that to make sure that we show them what the benefit of it was this year and what, how it benefited communities this year and carry that over into the legislature to show how their communities um, benefited from affordable, uh, from the affordable housing trust fund. I think being able to show and tell the benefits of how communities are much better when we, when we fund it uh, it, it's, it's not only helpful, but it gives a better upward bound to be able to uh, continue to fund it in years to come. I mean, that's just, I know for a fact how the, the legislature run. When they're looking at to see, all right, let's look at the numbers. And let me go back and I say this, Brother Ragu, don't forget that this was an election year. And so because this was an election year, of course, they, they want to make sure that they follow it. And Jack knows this. Jack been in this game for a long time. You know, that you, you look at how all of these things, uh, you look at teacher pay. You look at the affordable housing trust fund. You look at all these things that's happening. They did these things. You mean the election year, so they want to be able to put this stuff on on their palm cards and on their mailers and things like that. But we got to be able to hold them on to the, their feet to the fire on off election years also. Everything right? Yeah, you know, I've done a lot of I made a lot of mistakes, but um, you know, I'm always willing to listen. And and Caroline, I really appreciate that. And I, I, listen, I don't want to agree with I don't want you to agree with me with everything I say and vice versa. That's, that's both. I, I want us to have a disagreement so we can have a conversation <laughs> on the issue with you know, how um, how higher ed is being treated. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, I was on the phone with uh, President Gregory Hale uh, because he was speaking to me about the issue with um, the, uh, well, the complaint that came to me. So I had to call him um, to ask him, you know, what position is the college going to take with the board of trustees when it comes to um, how do these counselors uh, were uh, eliminated from, from their positions, but yet still uh, another position uh, of, of lesser pay was uh, offered up uh, for, for, for teacher, I mean, excuse me, for these counselors. So let, let's, let's, let's start at the top, right? We, we have a problem with the appropriation process within higher ed right now within the state of Florida. As, you, I'm, as Carolina, you know this when we spoke about this, and that is because the state continues to cut from our, uh, I'm not going to call them community colleges, but to our, um, our transient schools, schools like um, uh, Broward College, schools like Miami-Dade College. Well, we know a great deal of students from the community where I serve were in those schools, and the adjunct, the adjunct professors who are in the who are in these schools, they get treated in they get treated in this manner because the state does not put a priority on these type of colleges, but they put a high priority on universities. And so, what we have to continue to do is we have to educate the state and let them know that. 90% of the students are not going to a university. 90% of the students are going to colleges after they leave from high school. Uh, and so I believe what one, one we need to do, we need to make sure that we put more people in this in, uh, put more, I, I'm, I don't know what people's political party is, so I'm just putting it out there. We need to put, we need to change the makeup of the, of the Senate, which we are three seats away from doing that, uh, to create a balanced government system to what forces everybody to come to the table to negotiate where things like this cannot continue to get railroaded. But until then, Carolina, they are going to continue to railroad these things, and not just when it comes to um, come, uh, comes to um, uh, faculty, but every um, uh, when, when unions at large, they will continue to railroad uh, because they can, they think they can. Um, but I believe we're close. I think that if we can continue, if, if we can end November in the right way, um, the uh, the legislature is going to have a very hard time in January. Pushing forth any type of legislation um, that that forfeits th these type of things, and I think we need to, to demand these type of things. Uh, and the last, I'll, I'll, end, I'll end with this: that I also think that the uh, the unions, uh, I think 
uh, as faculty unions um, specifically, uh, I, I believe that we need to do, and I say we because I, 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 I do, um, uh, I teach at FAU also. I believe that we need to uh, go to the legislature earlier. I think if we go to the legislature earlier and start educating them on these things and making sure that we're not doing this just when session starts, it gives us a, a greater deal to not even negotiate with them, but to at least state a case and let them know, listen, I don't have an office. My office is my trunk. And so which they don't understand. And so I think we need to be able to make our case tab it early to the right people, and that's leadership. Yeah. To be very honest with you, uh, Francis, you're right. Um, I think that the when you when we go into the legislature um, next year, you will you're going to see that the budget estimating conference, when they come together to look at our shortfall for next year, um you're going to see that they're going to uh, sweep trust funds next year. Um, you can, I can also guarantee you um, that they're going to look at ways um, to cut back on a lot of social services um, for, for next year. Um, and so uh, I, can, I can almost assure you that uh, it, it's going to happen. I think we can make it extremely clear that we have to continue to call out legislation that's coming out. For instance, the governor just signed, signed this E-Verify. I mean, these, these are the type of policies that are um, not only uh, not becoming of us as a state, it's not becoming of us as a country. Uh, you mean someone like myself, who, who my mother is from Ponce Puerto Rico, and my dad, whose family is from, um, is from the Nassau, Bahamas. Yeah, yeah, they, my, when my grandfather came here from both sides, my mom and my dad, they came here with the hopes of finding a better life for their children, which were my parents. And yeah, that's, that is the one reason why we, we make all of us so great. And I know that might sound like a talking point, but it's, but it's so true. If you look, even look at the legislature, there's no reason why the front rows, um, they disagree with, with uh, making sure that we, uh, that we have policies to ensure that your, your, your children are safe and they have to go to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court have to rule to release children from, 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 um, uh, from, um, uh, uh, from from well, I'm gonna call them prisons because that's what they that's what they uh, they seem like. Uh, but we should not have we should not create these type of policies that that is like this. The only way we're gonna bring each other together is that we one we have to continue telling each other's story. Two, we have to create send people to into office who are who are empathetic and and know for a fact that these type of policies are not becoming of us.